What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion, and welcome to Painting Tutorials. Welcome back, TMP fans, and I have to say that you're a ray of sunshine that brings light to my entire day. Thank you for coming by and chilling with me. Today, we're going to do a commission painting, or at least show you a painting tutorial of a commission painting of Gary and Freaky. And although that sounds like a nightclub, it is the wolves that the Norse god Odin had, um, but it's also um, Lehman Russ's two pups, the same names. I guess it's taken from Greek uh, or Norse mythology there. All right, so let's go down to Tabletown for this exciting new project in resin, and it comes in three stages. Uh, let's get down there and see how I did it. All right, I'm gonna start off with phase one, the unboxing. And there's the Horus Ceresi box that it comes in. I think it's really nice. Um, this piece of paper here has the instructions how to build it and a picture for what they suggest for you to paint it as. Plus it has that little uh, hole on the top, which is to hang from a hook or something like that, which is interesting because it comes in a box. All right, going into these plastic containers and they do separate that because if you're working with resin, then it's actually prone to chipping and breaking. So packaging is super important when it comes to these things. But it is a very nice little box. Uh, it seems a little more important than the other boxes you get from Games Workshop. So that is pretty cool with the gold foil, uh, making me feel a little special and whatnot. Now these boxes here are taped on the side. So you gotta have to pull those off. Now you could go at it with an X-Acto blade, but what I decided to do is just peel this sucker right off. I don't know, it gave me some difficulty, but you know, just a little bit of difficulty there. Um, getting open, there's a serial number on the box itself, on the lid there for both of those. I don't know if that means something. It says to recycle the plastic. And here is the book that it comes with, Priming and Painting Resin. That gives you a little detail on how to prep your miniatures. And then you wash them first, which I did off screen. Um, and then, you know, if something is bent, you throw them in some hot water and then you could like bend them. That's very interesting. Repositioning parts that are bent, how to clip them, uh, both the casting gates, uh, how to deal with mold lines and, and shims, all kinds of things that you can add to it. Um, and they give you a lot of different, uh, well, I wouldn't say detailed instructions, but there are some pictures in here to help guide you with, with not, not, it's better than not getting anything at all, which is great. And, you know, it does feel a little important. There's a serial number ID right there who is checked by. Checked by number 10, whoever number 10 is in the uh, Forge world. All right, let's get op to opening. Oh, more tape going on for the second part. I guess I'll get all the tape out before I just unleash all the goodness to you and show you what it's like. Now, it's always been a dream of mine to paint uh, Lehman Ross. And, you know, careful what you wish for because uh, Forge World Resin is, well, not as easy as plastic to work with. Let's just put it that way. It's somewhere in between um, stuff fail cast, <laughs> that's what I'll call that, and plastic. So somewhere in between both of those, which is interesting. Uh, but there is a lot of detail going on here. And it's all like mushed together. I think part of me wished that the bases came a little bit separate. So this way I can subassemble them a little more. But this is going to take a little bit of cleaning up to do. You're going to see there that it has the really big heavy bottoms there, which is something new that you don't really see on uh, regular uh, GW miniatures, but there's that and these huge poles that come up uh, and some wisping and the wisping that 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 kind of um, Mold lining I guess that's super flashing. That's what it's called flashing because you, you get that on some older mold kits for uh, 124 scale modeling you get that flashing that comes in there and that's just because the mold is super old and not as airtight because after you do so many it kind of warps after a while it's just the nature of the beast when it comes to resin casting and not resin printing which is different um should four world resin print maybe i don't know <laughs> i don't know that might be uh nice for them Okay, time for phase two, the prepping of this. Now again, I washed it off scene, and now what I'm gonna do is get clip-ons. Now this clipper that I use is Zircon Clippers. I 
exclusively use these clippers. I do have a lot of clippers, even the ones, the fancy ones from GW, but these are the smoothest clippers I've ever owned. I got two sizes. I'm gonna use the larger size for the larger bits here uh, and just trying to flush and clip here. Being very careful because this is resin and it could possibly chip. So I do have to keep that in mind when you're doing that. And of course, you can sand that down. If you are sanding this down though, I do recommend that you wear some facial gear and that is to protect. And you have to be careful with cutting these along the, the, the side there um, you have to do is flush it and I learned that sort of the hard way there because there was a portion that that did a little cracking right there and I had to repair it which the repair is seamless like it, it came out really well but keeping it flush to the the lines here are important so don't make that mistake all right, I'm gonna clip out some more so I can tell you and get the hang of clipping resin without breaking it so you just add it flush and then you just snip it like that, which was much easier than the last one that I did there. See that? Just flush and then clip it like that. Okay, great. Okay, so next up, uh, we have the tail here that we're going to do this. I don't know whose tail that is right now, but just getting that in. And after you clip all the pieces, then of course you get your paints uh, and you get your, I did the Rust-Oleums, uh, phase three, time for the painting tutorial now that we have all our paints. All right, Rhinox hide right now. I did do the Rust-Oleum beige, camouflage beige first, uh, just to get that lighter color in there. So the Rhinox hide is gonna go in on top, a nice rich uh, red brown, which I love. I love deep, rich red browns for the of this. Now, you may have noticed that I have painted these up uh, in Highland colors, and that's, you know, the brown on top with the beige on the bottom. That's the way I went for both of these. And even though there might be one white wolf and the other one beige like this, I thought that this matched even better. Just what I wanted to paint. It seems like a uh, a great colors game. I don't know. I've done the gray wolves as well, um, as well as doing this kind of color here. I just felt it better. It just melded in better with the colors and for the, uh, the, the, the ground, the gray just didn't work for me personally. So, and then I was told by this commission that I can just take free license however I wanted to paint these, that it was, you know, fair game, which, you know, giving me creative license was pretty cool because then I could paint and just enjoy the process. And I have been, I've been enjoying the process of painting these miniatures. All right, Agrax Earthshade is next. And then I put that over there because you get to see that the Rhinox highs was thin to the point where it was leaving a glare to it. And what this does is twofold. One, it keeps a rich brown in there. And two, it takes the sheen off the fur, which I definitely want it off the fur. So doing that both helps with the transition that we're going to do uh, a little bit later. Uh, we're going to turn that brown and we're going to do a mid-tone to get to the um, to get to the lighter beige color right there. And I want to make sure that there is a nice little transition that occurs uh, going through. And yeah, so if you don't know, shades are super matte, so <laughs> it's perfect to knock off the sheen. Also to add a little bit of depth to your paint job while spraying it through an airbrush. Next up, uh, we have Serapon Sepia, and that's going to be our transition tone. And that's going to go from the dark uh, to the other shade that we did, Agrax Earth Shade, and get us into that beige. It's a nice little red tone right there. If you really want to go red too, a Reichland Frost Shade might come well, but look how just nicely it comes on in the edges, how like light mid-tone brown that is, and it just makes it, it just melds really well. If you ever want to do that really easy for any wolves that you're painting, if you want to do Highland, uh, this is definitely the step to do that. Now, using shades as a mid-tone is not exclusive to these colors either. You can use them for other colors as well. Uh, I love using shades. Now, I have not used contrast paint through an airbrush yet. I know I'm a little late to the party, but I, Happened to have so many paints that I filled two store racks full of paints and they're behind me in my intros and outros if you wanted to check that out. I have enough paint. <laughs> I, there are some paints that I really want to try, the Camara and stuff like that, but uh, yeah. Here's some Game Fantasy uh, Heavy Yellow 
uh, high key yellow, sorry, high key yellow. And that's going to be for the nose. I'm really going to get a really light, almost yellowish color for the nose because I really want to draw attention to the face, right? And watering down these, um, these medium based, uh, paints and, um, you have scale 75, the fantasy and game ones are very much, uh, medium based paints. They're not just, uh, water based paints. So having those, you can just thin them down with water and they won't lose their pigmentation. They won't break down, which is great. All right. Time for this elaborate break. Um, elaborate base which they painted so i'm just doing some steinal res gray through an airbrush right now just trying to give like a little bit of a zenithal i mean i, I would think at a instead of a 90 degree angle i would do it at a 45 degree angle or 50 degree angle something like that um i wasn't actually with a protractor looking at the exact angle but you know something about that but you do it to your own what you're doing is just i just want to inform where my shadow is are going to be and where my highlights are going to be. That's all I'm doing right now. Plus I'm making the um, area lighter, especially when you're painting red, which uh, is the colors for the uh, thousand suns at uh, the Horus heresy. They're red. And I just wanted to get uh, a little lighter color down. So this way I can have the highlights, the under shading going on and really hitting that and bringing your eye to focus on the fallen right there. Uh, a little better. And I go through so many paints when it comes to this uh, process with these bases. Again, they are very, very elaborate and they come all together, which is something. So there it is. That's what it is. It shows me where my highlights are, where my shadows are going to be. And I, I use a lot of glazing through an airbrush. And if you didn't know how to do that, it's just, you know, you get yourself, um, some super highlights right now, but you get some self, some ink and you can go to town when it comes to that. If you dilute the ink, you can do definitely glazing with that. So now I'm doing Steinal Res white and I'm really giving some hot spots for it. These are dramatic hot spots that once we cover with a lot of paint, a lot of paint and you have to trust in the process here. Uh, that is the really big thing. I want my highest highlights to be white right now because I'm going to cover all this in paint and that's the way it's going to look. And I'm getting a little clear closer with the airbrush because I want it to be gray in the surround and then white in the middle. So there is a transition there from black to gray to white. And when you have that transition, what you're doing is giving it uh, depth. And what we're going to do is going to bring it up to 11 because we're going to knock it down back to a 10. Uh, so that's what we're doing right now. Okay. So now time to do a little bit of that ink that I told you before, we're just hitting with a little bit of, um, Vallejo inks. And I really do like their reds. I like their inks. They're very forgiven when you're, um, airbrushing. So if you are, try to use that and you see how the undertones are really shining through that white is really bringing a highlight to it. Uh, and the dark recesses are staying like a dark, deep, crimson which i'm going to emphasize later on yes you can paint shadows in as well you want to have colors in your shadows to really exemplify depth when it comes to uh painting a character or something you really want to bring attention to of course the more attention you want to bring to something the more work you're gonna to have to put in to bring that thing out so what I did is just cover it with that ink and it became super red. If you want super red colors here, uh, the Vallejo game color ink is where to go. All right. Carabag Crimson right now is shades. I am just going to paint in their shadows. So my shadow color here is red, which is great. And you see the notice that there is overspray going on within that, which when you don't paint in sub assemblies, that's going to happen. So I show you a, way, a method and how to deal with that in just a bit. All right, Agrax Earthshade right now. We're giving some earth tones to it now that we have the red. And I do try to get close to where the overspray is and the darkest areas. So this way I can cover some of that red that was going on. But I'm getting very, very careful with where I'm placing the actual brush. Getting closer when I get closer to uh, the actual red model that's on the base here. Getting further away when I want to just do a rough uh, sketch of where I want to do, but 
exactly where all the black areas are, where all the shadows are, that's what I'm covering in the Agrax Earthshade because I want the shadow color to be a brownish because I'm contemplating that there's soil underneath that concrete or whatever material there is that they use that's cracked open there that's coming up. So the Agrax Earthshade is that dark, deep brown to represent that. Now, I do a once over over everything as well to give it that color. Now, Seraphon Sep, yeah, that nice little pop of little red color giving it different tonality of the browns. Browns are really easy to be able to do because they're very, very forgiven. Uh, the only thing about brown is they're not very interesting, which is great for me because my interest, again, is going to be in two things. In the brown model that I painted, which is hard to create interest with unless you get an incredible amount of depth to, and then that red uh, model on the bottom. And I don't want the red model on the bottom to be overshadowed. Now time for some Xandri dust. And Xandri dust is what I'm going to put onto the surfaces of the cracked concrete. Again, keeping it that brown shade, adding some interest and depth to it, uh, and just bringing things out. So the pillars are definitely Xandri dust as well. And if you want to know how I paint these regular paints into my airbrush, well, I strain them through a strainer. And I do have a video about that that you can check in the catalog on how I strain my paint uh to be able to uh paint them in airbrush and it not clog up on me the thing about games workshop paints and many paints really is that they start drying and they have little little bits of dried bits and they clog up your airbrush and since you're trying to push all that paint through the small little nozzle then you're going to get some clogging and that's just going to ruin your day when it comes to painting all right so there it is, is Andrew Justin there adding some depth to it. I want to bring some of that gray back into it. Again, Steinal Res Primer is where it's at, giving a little more concrete ish. So I would think maybe a wall was Zandri Dust, and then the floor was a grayish color, giving that, you know, double tonality in there. Again, most of this model, I was kind of playing around with paint and trying to play around with the different kind of textures that were on this. And I'll tell you, a lot of time went into this elaborate base that I did here. There was just so much time involved. I wanted to get it just right, but not overpowering. Okay, time to paint the miniature that comes on. Uh, this is miniature over here is one that is standing up to one of the wolves. I believe that's Freaky. And yes, I know. <laughs> I love it. I love his name. All right. And he's... <laughs> And I looked it up how to say it. That's the way you say it. It's Gary and Freaky. So, okay, time for some Avalon Sunset. Just getting that in there. And I mix a 50-50 Avalon Sunset and uh, Gaming Ink because the model itself is supposed to have some kind of like sheen to it, like a glow, the armor. Um, it's supposed to be like a little gleamish. So when you put that ink on there, you're going to have that gleam. And you'll see that. It looks like almost wet right there. There's some portions that I did not want to airbrush here, so I went at it with a paintbrush, which I knew that I was going to cover over with some liquid talent, some Karabur Crimson later on. So I was sort of careful, did a couple of layers with that. Um... And, you know, I did a couple of coats, I mean, not layers, a couple of coats with that. I hit it on with uh, different layers of different paints as well. You know, I put some orange in there for some highlights. And I just really just web blended my, my heart's content just to get some highlights and stuff like that. Now, web blending does take a long time, so I really didn't put it onto the screen. But you get to see over here, how I'm just dabbing on where the highlights are going to be. So this way it has some orange, uh, some nice hot spots as well onto the model on the floor. All right, so now time to delineate the lines in there. I go again using Agrax Earthshade as a wash, as intended, you know, and I want pooling, that's fine because it is the ground, so I don't mind that it's pooling. Plus, I was thinking about creating blood around there as well, but I don't want the overspray to be a little over dramatic there. I do want just a tiny bit of red showing, showing that it was bleeding out, um, but mostly I wanted to delineate the model from the base that it's attached to. Quite interesting model there. 
All right, now that you're getting some depth, let me get really close and you can see trust in the process. That's what it all, it's all about here, trusting in the process um, because right now this is very much the ugly phase. All right, right now just getting the golden bits right there and I love using Vallejo metal color gold for here. Um, the coverage is so great and I sped this up so you can see all the gold bits because it really took forever. So yeah, it's sped it up a thousand times faster than I did it. If I just read this regular time, it would have been a three hour video. So <laughs> you know, nobody wants to sit there for three hours, unless you really want to sit uh, there for three hours and model and paint and stuff like that. Um, I know I have a hard time sitting for that long. <laughs> Okay, some Sotec green. You know, I love this green. I'm going to use that for the eyes here. Just bracing my hand, getting really, really close. Um, getting that green in and trying to stay in focus. Uh, it's really difficult to stay in focus when you miniature paint like this. Because <laughs> you really can't move. Which is good when you want to paint small things like eyes and stuff like that. So there it is. Um, and then I boop that, those things with a little bit of white as well. Put a white little boop on there. I'm just going to add a little extra in there. Yeah, very smooth and soft strokes right there when it comes to um, painting the eyes. All right, some Vallejo model color white here just to put a little boop around to the eye. There it is. Shining little gleam that goes on to the eye that no one will notice except for me or maybe you if you, um, James Meeks, who commissioned this model for me, uh, who commissioned me to paint this model. Maybe if you look at it, now you know that there's a little boop in the eye, okay? <laughs> Speaking of white, we're going to make these uh, runes here kind of glow, which is kind of neat. All right, so what we're going to do is going to paint this white because that's going to be the brightest rune, and I'm going to do all the runes for the models so you see them. Just put the white on to all the edges of these, and you're going to see the next step. Now, the next step is going to be a glaze of white and that Sotec green, and just, just hitting very, very light coats, very saturated with water coats and very glaze medium coats and just adding some more depth to it and putting on some more and always just dabbing and drying and dabbing and drying and it gives that little blue sheen to the entire thing as if it was glowing and i love doing that i love adding some depth of color in there and everybody's like how did he do that how did he do that well you know it's just a little bit of glazing here and there and you see that i'm just tapping it here and there i'm not really painting it with paint strokes just tapping it here and there getting it more and then the more you want it to be pronounced the more times you paint it over and over and over and over again. And there you go. That's about just a hint of glow going on in there. Not totally obvious glow, but just a hint of glow that that is just a glowing rune. I'm going to do that with all the parts. Now, what I'm doing right here is I have clear red, and that is from uh, Tamiya uh, Paints. Um, that is basically blood for the blood God. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the red sections that are overspray and I'm going to douse that into blood. Now we already have the brown uh, mixed in the Agrax Urshade mixed in with the overspray. So it kind of looks like there is a little bit of red undertones when it comes to this clear, which really makes it look like, you know, different kind of clotting blood. All right. Time for the gold pieces. And I do all the gold pieces for the arms and legs and all the accoutrement that comes. And again, this is all the base so far. And it's still a base. I think most of this tutorial is going to be the base because it is really intensely the base. You know, I, I mean, I do the, the wolves as well, but, you know, there's just so much going on in this base. All right, uh, doing this, I am painting white with uh, gray. And the gray I'm using here is Dino Res Primer, which is self-leveling and great. And mixing those two colors together, it makes this white entity paint a little bit better, um, a little bit easier. And that's gonna be like the main color. And then I go back and I mix in a little bit more white to give in some highlights to those colors. And that's how I do it, right? So I mix the uh, gray and the white together 
to get that. And then I make some more white in so I can get highlights in there and more white in so I can get ultra highlights in there. And that's how you create that gradient. You know, you just mix, don't, don't be afraid to mix your paints. A lot of people are, you have to pick it out of the, you got to pick it out of the pot and that's the way it's going to be. No, have some fun with it. You know, have some play, play around with the paint, see what you can really do. What are those, what are, one of those things that you do that is better than and and, and really pops uh, other than other people's miniatures is that is those little half steps you take between the paints. You know, you like when you go to a gradient, you have those half steps that keeps on going a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, and that only means that you're mixing more of one color to the base color that you have a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little more when you paint. So there it is. So painting white can be easy. All right. Time for some black. I'm going to get in a little uh, ceramite or between the ceramite panels here. Um, getting in there as well. And I'll tell you, painting them that they're not some assembly is so foreign to me. It's so different to me uh, because I'm definitely not used to that. Now, keep in mind that a lot of this is really not going to be seen as much. <laughs> That's not the main star of the attraction. Speaking of the main star of the attraction, I, paint, I mix white with red to get this uh, nice pink color, but it's almost like bubblegum pink. And I'm going to start from there. I'm going to start adding adding a lot of different washes and just kind of throwing them in there and, and seeing what's happened. And that's what I usually do. Now, it's not not directly white with pink. Uh, I digress. It's actually like a light flesh tone, a very like fairy flesh from Vallejo model color, um, light flesh, and, and then the red as well. That will definitely do you. It gives you more of a of an inner nose thing. Going to get boop on the nose after I bit a little bit of glazing with red on the maw. So this way it looks like it, it's been chewing on some blood lately. All right, time for Caraberg Crimson. Again, getting into that maw there, just making sure it looks like this thing has been eating blood and guts on the battlefield for quite some time, that his nose is stained in all the nastiness that's been going on. And that's why I wanted to glaze that in there. And that's one of the traits of the wolves that I paint. I do actually have that gore-ish face in there. I wanted to get that in there. Uh, interesting painting these miniatures. Uh, again, resin is tricky. There's a lot of little edges that the paint rubbed off on that I had to go back and touch up as well. So holding it in this way, and I don't see any other way you can really hold it. You know, there's not really too much that you can do aside from touching the miniature itself, which will peel the paint off in the painting process. And that's fine. You know, you just need to go back there and clean it up, you know. All right. Getting that just so this one has a little more gore than the other one and i'm actually going to put blood in his teeth and whatnot so it looks like it's really really bloody so i wanted to get this one a little more than the other one all right looking pretty good now for some caraberg crimson which uh i am going to open up oh no what am i doing here reichlin fresh aid that's it reichlin flesh aid i was, I was going to fill in something there but again with the washes just coming into the mouth and since it looks a little bit peaches 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 peach ish i should say all right i wanted to get it a little more red and brown like a dog's mouth really if you ever look inside a dog's mouth it's uh the brown parts, there's pink parts, there's all kinds of things going on in there. And so, you know, you wanted to get that, that feel to it. So that flesh tone. And I did really play around with a lot of different washes. All right, there it is so far. And uh, going in and painting the teeth now. Uh, a little bit of Zandri dust in there because I wanted to be like a little bit yellow. And I'm mixing it with a little bit of white here uh, just to get a mix between Zandri dust and white and uh, get that nice little shade of, of beige that I'm looking for because the teeth are not exactly clean, but you want to delineate them. Uh, and I want to accentuate them because they are going to be really sharp. I want you to bring your attention to the teeth a little bit. So I am painting that that lighter color uh, so you can see it, but definitely dirty uh, as well. And that's part of the shades do that. Um, and it's pretty neat that you get that realistic kind of vibe going there. All right, all right, here we go. 
and I am painting some Agrax Earthshade into the eyeballs. So this way I can surround the eyes. I'm going to paint the eyes yellow, but I want the shadows to be a brown. So Agrax Earthshade does fill in very nicely with that. Okay, once it's dry, um, I'm doing Flash Gets Yellow. Uh, and getting in there with the yellow tone because I like yellow eyes when it comes to painting my wolves. All my wolves have yellow eyes because it's distinct, you know? Uh, how often do you get to paint yellow eyes? And uh, this is an opportunity that I didn't want to pass up. And I paint them yellow and I go back um, and I do the eye slits uh, vertically. Unfortunately, it came out blurry on the camera so I could not put the vertical eye slits into the camera, the technique in which I use, which is just, you know, vertical eye slits. All right, speaking of which, some um, continuing on to the Reichland Flesh Aid and going on to the fingers this way, uh, fingernails, so this way it can have some depth to it. I wanted to have some depth within there and uh, paint those up. Yes, I am painting the nails. <laughs> Which is fun. I also paint the foot pads as well. Um, again, um, this is more um, pink and then brownish as well. All right, time to do the leather straps. Uh, Rhinox hide, starting with that, uh, and then snake bike leather uh, is going on top of that as well. But you can use any dark um, brown and then put a lighter brown or caramel brown on top of it to make it really look uh, great. Now time for the gold for the emblems as well. Uh, and this model's almost done. You can see it's already on its base and it's time for just some touch-ups and for details. And that's what we're doing right now, just the details. All right, again, leather straps are going with that. I do paint the emblems blue, but again, it came blurry when I painted those. Um, I did use um, a light blue paint to be able to paint that. Now the teeth is as well all the charms there are a lot of charms then i went back and noticed the scars and that's when i'm going to go another flesh tone with some red to get that nice scarring pink that's the way i do it some flesh tone with some red uh great combination when it comes to scars if you didn't know how to do scars pick that up and do it up you see it's turning out pretty okay and the base is second fiddle to the star of the show which is the wolf and that's exactly the way i wanted to do that i wanted to kind of downplay the base you know i want it to be um there and pretty snazzy and interesting but not the star of the show you know you don't want it to overpower the miniature uh, very balance is very important. All right, Caraburn Crimson time, and I'm just going to do a wash over that piece that I painted, and I painted with a um, Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, so this way I can just tone it down and it looks like somebody else's backpack or his backpack armor that kind of like got shredded off. He's definitely having some issues uh, <laughs> today. Well, whenever you mess around with... Um, you mess around with the wolves of Fenris, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. So time for some varnish. I use AK Interactive uh, matte varnish, uh, ultra matte varnish. And the reason why I use that and I use the varnish in, in itself is because this model is going to be played with. Uh, the customer is going to play with these models. So I want to make sure that it doesn't chip off. And it doesn't, you know, um, the paint doesn't rub off while they're using it. And so I put on a hefty dose of that. All right, going back, some more scars are happening here on the top of the head that I notice. And the thing that I do is I always come back and revisit and look at the model and say to myself, what did I miss? What am I, what did I miss? Wild Rider Red is next. All right, so you got some Wild Rider Red in here. And what I'm gonna do is um, there are some highlights here that didn't pop as much as I wanted them to. So I wanna make sure that they pop uh, by doing some edge highlighting here. And that's what we're gonna do with this. Since the red was so dark before, we're gonna do edge highlighting throughout the entire model. It does take a long, long time. So I'm gonna fast forward things going through. Uh, but you're gonna see that you have to get into everything when it comes to edge highlighting, really to get that ultra highlight in there. If not, it looks dull. And this is where it makes it really, really pop. The grenade here also uh, is a light green and I put a, a wash of um, Athonian camo shade. Again, bringing it up to 11 and knocking it down to a 10 with those shades is what we're doing here. Um, 
making that, you know, a success. Um, <laughs> all right, going back to this one, time I'll add a little bit of copper in with my gold, just so I can make it a little darker gold or a red gold um, going in there. And, you know, I do really, really light successions of those, uh, the dress plates and stuff like that. I do want some of that red to shine through. I want it to be reddish gold. So I start off with a copper and that's going to be my base. And then I, I have the gold on there as well on the same little cuppy thing that I have there, which is actually the bottle cap of a water bottle. I like to recycle them by using them for my, um, uh, paints as well. And then I put a little bit of chrome in there, mixed it in there and make it really, really bright, but only retaining some of the red in there. There's a lot of gold in there. So adding depth to gold is kind of tricky. So I do want to keep those undertones still in there by adding different layers of gold, which takes, as you can see, forever. Again, speeding it up a thousand times faster. Um, I don't know. I think it took me about an hour just to get that done <laughs> and get it looking interesting. All right. Um, time to steady my hand. I need to see painting these again, white with the um, Steinal Res uh, gray primer because it's self-leveling and just doing one or two strips and keeping my hands super steady. All right, here's where brush control really comes into play here. You don't want to mess around here. You're not just going to quickly get it done. You're actually intentionally putting the brush exactly where you want the paint and slowly going through and controlling your hand. And then it comes out really great. Now I'm gonna do white on the tips. To, this way it shows like a fading from the grayish to the really, really bright white. And when you already have it down in gray, painting white over it, just it's so much easier. So that's what I like to do when I'm painting white. So now I have a gradient on white and I do have that theme that I really want for the 30K uh, thousand suns. All right, time to do the same gold process as I did for the chest for the edges of uh, his, I don't know if you want to call it his crown, but I'm, I am. So very Anubis vibe here. Okay. <laughs> very, very much Anubis. All right. Getting that in and you see that there is a lot of depth going on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash out. Uh, some of these cords on the bottom getting Vallejo steel color uh, and, and just diluting that to the point where it's just going over there and becoming steel coming out of there. Originally, I thought gold might be a nice color, but I left that in there for the tendrils um, and I didn't like it, so I changed it up. All right, time to get a little bit of orange, uh, Wild Rider Red in there, just to put the tips of the red for, again, that crown, um, that Anubis type of crown, doing the edge highlighting in between. That is super important. It's very, very uh underlooked at and makes such a dramatic difference when you have those edge highlightings in there. It just makes it pop so much more because you go from dark to light like that. It just draws the eyes to it. But again, I don't want it to be the star of the show, but it's such a massive piece on this base. I couldn't, uh, you know, not paint it. So you can see I am just doing some edge highlighting throughout the thing. Again, speeding it up again a thousand times quicker so you can see how quickly, uh, well, how <laughs> laborious this is actually intensive. Um, but, you know, in the end, I think it came out pretty well. All right, time to do black for the Vox that's coming out of its mouth. And black is an interesting coloring. I use Vallejo model color black. And you have to be careful with black because once it thickens, ugh. Black is kind of hard to work with. So unless you're running through it very quickly, it gets kind of tough. All right. Time to paint these white. And I do many, many coats of it gray and white for some reason. It was, you know, came out really blotchy for a lot of the times. So by the fifth layer, it was all right. You know, it was just one of those things. Sometimes you have to just layer in white for multiple coats. But, you know, it came out pretty creamy. Uh, the first time in there, but I just wasn't satisfied with it. And I kept on going over and over again until it was I was satisfied. Athonian Camo Shade is the next thing. And I'm going to get some green in there because I did brown in the last one. I'm going to get some green in there. Some, a little bit of moss that's growing on the ground. Maybe 
uh, some kind of corrosions going on there, uh, getting in there. And um, yeah, just try to vary it up. Again, I'm playing with the paint and I'm having some fun. Um, I encourage you to do that when you're painting. If you have this model and if you're watching this video, you probably have this model. Um, just to encourage you to play around with your paint. All right, time to do the eyes as well. Uh, same technique as I did for the Marine, slow and steady wins the race here. Uh, going in with the same colors. Um, really, really love that contrast of the red and the blue. You can use any kind of blue, but I use Sotec green here, which is a nice tealish blue, a dark tealish blue, which I really love. I really, really love. Okay. Now did you have that model starting to look pretty good here. Uh, I'm going to do the boop in the eyes because I never leave an eye unbooped. I have a little white line. There it is. And I learned that by doing a lot of lenses. Okay, time to go back to this model here that's fending off for his life and will definitely lose. Going to do some black in the between the ceramite, uh, the ceramite pieces of armor here. Just to add to that, we're going to do the gold which is a lot. Um, there's a lot of gold. I mean, I feel for anybody who does um, red armor here uh, because there's so many different ways to do it. And once you lock in a, a, a good way to do it, it you want to kind of stick to it. But this one, I wouldn't do 30K uh, personally, 30K uh, army for Thousand Suns. Um, it's just not my vibe. But then again, you know, I do have Thousand Suns for 40K. All right, coming back with this nice little green. You could paint it olive green if you want. That's worked uh, for me as well. All right, time for the edge highlighting. Here we go. Wild Rider Red in there for the clutch, uh, giving that pops that you want to do. Uh, and I go back there and actually add some Wild Rider Red um, and actually do some lines as well, just to bring that up as well. All right, a camo shade. Um, is going back on to these grenade bits right there just to bring it down a bit knock down the color a little bit and you know it looks great okay time for the um blue again that's otec green coming in <laughs> all right and then the white boop as well all right yeah i'm gonna do this arm in here and uh the arm and chainsaw Again, painting the emblem white here, which is again a mix of gray and white. It's the style res gray with the um, white color that I used for a Vallejo model color, um, which comes in and I do that. And I also do that for the sword because that is pretty much their, um, their emblems, their colors there, um, which is fun little colors. I do like that, you know, um, like it reminds me of like the hospital sign. <laughs> yeah. So using the edge of the brush instead of the tip of the brush here, just trying to get the overhead things in there. Um, and it comes out all righty. And uh, time for some gold coming through as well. I can paint that up uh, as well. And now you have to do uh, the chain sword. And I wanted to do it in white. So it's interesting. I did it really, really liquidy here. And I did a lot of different colors because it's a larger flat surface. So, you know, if you have brush strokes, they really show up here. So, you know, you have to thin it down quite a bit and uh, do several, several, several coats here. Wild Rider Red, just to do some highlights on the fingers right there. And just bringing that up, just touching areas where I want it to get a little bit brighter, a little bit highlighted there, just touching here and there, just layering that in and, you know, making it pop just a little bit. Alrighty. So now I did put Magnus on one side, the TPMP logo, because I had to write something on that blank space there. And I put did no wrong on the other side right <laughs> and I wrote it in there. And if the customer does not like that, then they could always just paint some white over it and be done with it. All right, time just to get into any kind of bits where I feel like needed a little bit more color and just painting that in as well. Uh, getting that nice and squared away. Okay, time for some white. That's going to go on the pillars again. Again, we're going to do that nice little glow that we did last time for the pillars. 
uh, just to make sure that we have that nice bluish glow with the uh, Sotec green and um, doing all the white bits and then just glazing in those. I was just so smitten with the process here and I think it came out really well. I'm really happy about the pillars and the glowing. And that's the thing that I learned about this, um, uh, this model here. Uh, I learned how to do that glowing effect with the brush, which is amazing. I always try to learn something new. All right, time to paint the second wolf here. Again, we've got to go through the process um, quickly and we are coming closer to the end here. I think we have about five more minutes left um, in painting this model here. And then we'll show the final pictures and how it looked like. And then I'm going to include like my other wolves uh, alongside it so you can see size variant of the wolves, what they look like in comparison to each other. So I'm going to bring Logan Grimnar and my 40 K wolves. So you can see even my thunder wolf cavalry. So you can see the size difference between these guys and the other guys. I'm not going to tell you who's bigger, but there it is. You're going to see it at the end. If you stick by, all right, getting that scars in there again, we are doing that flesh color with the red, really bringing that pinkish or that scar pinkish out there for the scars. Um, I've been doing scars this way for quite some time, just blending in both of the paints. Um, I actually went a little white here just to put a little highlight on the scars to see how that would look and actually came out pretty well. So um, I liked it anyway, but try it and see if you like it as well. And if you do like it, then leave a comment to say how it worked for you uh, down in the comments below if you're interested. All right, some Caraber Crimson right now, just to get everything nice and red inside the mouth uh, so it's not too pinkish. All right, now that we have that going in there, again, going with the um, Sandry Dust and a little bit of white and getting those, and uh, just picking out those teeth, those gnarly teeth ready to come in and, and just rip things to shred. <laughs> All righty. So, all right, next up, what we do is the nose and the nose knows I do a little black. I did do some edge highlighting with some gray, uh, but I did it off camera. So sorry about that. It's just getting little boobs, little lines just to make sure and breaking up that just solid color black. And so this way you can have some depth to it. And I always, it's very interesting. All you have to do when painting is learn how the light plays on the miniature. If you learn how to play light on the miniature, then that's all we're doing. We're only just putting in where the light hits the miniature. That, that's painting miniatures, knowing where the light's coming from and how to add the light. Where's the highlight? Where's the shadow, right? So that's all we're doing when we're painting miniatures. All right, doing doggy nails, cause you know, that this is what we do. We do doggy nails. <laughs> oh man, that mouth is looking really good. All right. So, yep, some doggy nails going on here. Uh, and then we just I had a nail to hope, hold that open there. If you saw that technique here, uh, now we're just going to paint the gibbons or the gubbins that you have over here onto the miniature. And I glued them on, uh, onto the base and we are in a home stretch here. Uh, we're just going to do that and then some cleanup at the end, which I did off screen as well. Uh, the entire project took me, uh, I would say quite some time, uh, a month, maybe, uh, from start to finish, um, maybe a little more, <laughs> um, but it took, took my time. And in fact, this video was actually over three hours long and I, I, I got it down to under an hour, which yeah, there's a lot of cutting out. There's just very, very long sections of me just painting for hours. And, uh, <laughs> and even though I did cut off the video, you know, there it was.
what an exciting project for me to do and for me to give to someone else that commissioned me to do that. And I am proud to be able to do that for him. Well, if you like this video, you know what to do. Make sure you paint every miniature to improve at least one skill and may your backlog get ever smaller. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day